We've been wanting to do an episode on quiet quitting for some time now, and we didn't really know how to approach it uh, until this morning. I was actually on the train listening to the Why Theory podcast, which if you haven't listened to, I've shouted it out so many times uh, on this uh, program. Please check it out. It's really, really good. Talking about Marxism and Hegelianism and like psychoanalysis and film theory and like just really, really good. So check it out. Anyways, they've been doing a series on Hegel's phenomenology of spirit and it's taken them years to go through it. Um, And one of the members of that podcast, uh, Todd McGowan, is actually like, in my opinion, one of the leading experts on Hegel. So really worth listening to uh, in that regard because Hegel is really, really hard. But they're doing a series, and this last episode that they were doing was on absolute knowing. And uh, so this gave me an idea for this episode, but we're going to come back to that. So this is about quiet quitting. So what is quiet quitting? Well, we're going to read from the definition from the Harvard Business Review. We're going to go like as institutional as you can. The Harvard Business Review defines quiet quitting by saying this. Quiet quitters reject the idea that work should be a central focus of their life. They resist the expectation of giving their all or putting in extra hours They say no to requests to go beyond what they think should be expected of a person in their position. That's quiet quitting, which is everywhere in the media now. I'm sure that you have heard of it. According to a recent Gallup poll, quiet quitters make up 50% of the workforce, though even that number is less than it actually is because they only define quiet quitting as those who are not engaged at work. Another 18% of all workers are actively disengaged. So that's 68% of the workforce that is either not engaged or is actively disengaged at their jobs. Now, research has shown that this is not just caused by some you know, problem with work ethic or motivations and so forth, that this is actually a result of the workplace getting demonstrably worse. The Harvard Business Review did a study where they demonstrated that actually poor management was largely to blame for a large portion of this, as an example. But this episode is not about the cause of quiet quitting. That's not what we're interested in here. Um, In line with our goals as a program, we want to analyze quiet quitting in the context of a larger movement, what that could mean for a larger uh, labor movement, really, uh, and just analyze it from that perspective. So back to the Why Theory podcast and the idea that it gave me, they were talking about uh, estrangement. And if you know, uh, Hegel uses the word estrangement. Uh, I mean, Hegel doesn't, he wrote in German, but the translation is usually estrangement and uh, Marx is often translated as alienation. Uh, so kind of the same thing. We have a whole, like I think hour and like a half or something video on alienation from the Marxist perspective. So listen to that. We're not gonna go into that here, uh, but they had a really good short discussion on this estrangement from the Hegelian perspective. And then uh, Ryan, one of the hosts of the podcast, said something that really helped me frame this conversation. For Marx, revolution is overcoming this estrangement. And for Hegel, the revolution is in this estrangement. So we see that Hegel and Marx, not surprisingly, have two different versions of how to achieve sort of the revolution and the freedom that comes afterwards. Right. So let's talk about first the Marxist version and then how this relates to quiet quitting, which is what we're after here. Right. So for Marxists, quote unquote, freedom arrives through the overcoming of alienation. And in this example, right, the worker being alienated from their own labor, from their work. Right. So in other words, freedom is experienced when labor is wholly aligned with the interests and desires of the laborer or at the very least, the worker benefits from and experiences directly and totally uh, the products of their labor, right? So if we can overcome this alienation that we feel towards our jobs, then uh, we will be successful, right? This is the Marxist sort of, I don't want to use the word utopian because that's a loaded term in Marxism, but this is the goal, seeing the elimination of that alienation. Let's talk about what this means for quiet quitting. Through the Marxist lens, quiet quitting could, it has the potential to contribute to a larger movement if it's done towards these ends. So if quiet quitting is done, if it's used as a means to sort of hinder productivity and take power away from the capitalist class, then we could argue that quiet quitting could be an effective means for achieving this revolution. Whether this is effective or not 
is really the topic of another conversation. I would make the argument right now that labor is so fragmented, it really lacks the organization for this to be a coordinated effort that's really widespread enough to have a real impact, like singular, disparate workers, quiet quitting, no matter really how many of them there are. If they're not organized collectively, it's not really going to have a real impact on capital. But at least there is potential there. And see uh, a recent episode on general strikes and their legality in the United States for a lot more commentary sort of on that issue. Now let's talk about the Hegelian version. Um, as mentioned in the Y Theory clip, for Hegel, freedom comes via complete estrangement, so complete alienation. If an individual obtains the ability to completely separate themselves from their work so that it exists as something independent of themselves, only then can they truly know who they are. They would gain a maybe near complete knowledge of themselves and their labor, the positive and the negative. Uh, this is the term absolute knowing. Now we're taking some liberty with using this term in this context because we're specifically talking about labor here. Absolute knowing, absolute knowledge is much more general and kind of an abstract thing than that. But just understand, if you can understand both the positive and the negative, the, the dialectic, right? If you know anything about uh, Hegel, this is what we're talking about here. I think, honestly, that this is what more people have in mind when they are talking about quiet quitting or even when they're performing the act of quiet quitting, right? Sort of like, I am going to more exist as a person, as an individual, independently of my work. Sort of my identity doesn't necessarily need to be so tied to my labor. Right? I am going to better and more effectively and more intensely compartmentalize myself and my identity from my labor, from my job, from my work. Right? I think that that's definitely what people are more thinking towards. Now, of course, I, there's probably very few people that are like, you know, your friends are like, you know what, bro, I'm just quiet quitting. And you're like, yeah, totally. I'm like such a Hegelian, like quiet quitting. Like, it, like no one is saying that. Right? <laughs> I don't think that's happened a single time. But if you're doing it in the individualist, like I'm separating myself from my work, right? I'm going to more alienate myself than you're doing it in the Hegelian sort of perspective. I do want to stress something that's important is that this doesn't necessarily mean that the Hegelian version is individualistic, nor uh, in line with right wing thinking, uh, even though that's kind of how it sounds. And um, Hegel is often mistakenly presented as this sort of, you know, right wing, you know, inspirer of fascism and like so forth. All right. That's all a misconception. So that's not what I mean. For Hegel, we can all be collectively free once we have a complete knowledge of estrangement, right, of alienation, which can only be achieved, according to Hegel, through complete and total estrangement. We can only fully grasp ourselves and the other once we are completely separated from the other, whatever that may be. We're talking about labor here specifically. Um, but this little example, I think, does actually a good job of illuminating the difference between Hegel and Marx. While the Marxists seek to completely eliminate alienation and conflict, I mean, meaning to put an end to the dialectic. For Hegel, there is no end to conflict only a complete understanding of the things that are in conflict, understanding myself and the other, right? The negation and the status quo and so forth. We can gain an absolute knowledge of all of those things. So the question is, if you are quiet quitting, right? Which would we just say 68% of the workforce is in, disengaged, right? From their job in some way. Are you doing it as part of a concerted effort to jeopardize the hegemony of the capitalist class, which would be aligned with the Marxist perspective? Or are you doing it to more completely alienate yourself from your labor, which would give you a deeper understanding of yourself and of your labor together? Which are you doing? And I just want to say, I think that the, you know, quote unquote, worst thing that you could do would be to quiet quit without actually being conscious of why you are doing it. I think that we should elevate our discourse beyond, my job sucks, so I'm just not gonna try because I don't feel like it, right? Why are you doing it? Are you doing it to get a better understanding of yourself? 
Are you doing it to more effectively separate your labor from your individual identity so you can be happier, have a greater understanding of yourself and so forth? Or are you doing it because you are conscious of the fact that by doing this, I am stripping some amount of power, no matter how minutely in my individual case, from the capitalist class? And that is my goal. It's an anti-capitalist movement in that regard. Even if you are just one person doing it individually and you haven't talked to anyone else about it, ask yourself that question and see what you come up with. Let us know in the comments.